Welcome back everyone. Uh, hopefully this is going to stay in focus up here. Um, looking at a little project I did. Uh, I took a break from the bigger printer project because uh, as I mentioned uh, in a few posts and talking to some friends, I kind of don't want to rush that. Um, it's uh, getting into the home stretch and I didn't want to get excited and break something. So I wanted to do uh, some printing here uh, with my Fabricator Mini and I printed this, this funny little box which I will get into the bottom in a minute. Um, I printed this using some thermal PLA and this top plate is just a piece of acrylic. It's uh, um, a translucent uh, acrylic. I don't know if you can see my, maybe you can see, oh yeah, there you go. See the shadow through it. Um, I'm using that as a diffuser for this. This is those uh, NeoPixel rings. It's a 12 NeoPixel ring, and I printed, which is to date the biggest uh, um, area uh, single print that I've done on my Fabricator Mini. It's uh, ooh, just a little over, let's have a look. Yeah, two and a half inches square. Sorry, I'm just checking that on my ruler at the bottom. I don't know if that's showing up. Actually, these are inches here, so let's have a look. So, yeah, yeah, two and a half inches. Um, yeah, and you, you can, uh, can't really see here, but this green board is one of those little uh, boosters you get. You get like five for a dollar on eBay, and they're designed to take uh, any uh, low voltage, a lower, you know, like a, a double A or whatever, and kick it up to five volts so you can charge your cell phone. In fact, on the circuit board is the pinouts for a USB header uh, for the power tap and whatnot. And I just put some Kapton tape on the back of it and um, used a little bit of uh, hot glue to to glue it into the 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 frame here that I printed. And the frame was printed with a recess ridge that'll go. Oop, a little bit of hot glue in the way there. I just get that now. It was printed with this ridge. I don't know if you can see. Just grab my pointer. Um, oh, you can see it's starting to change color from me holding it, but there's a ridge right here that this uh, plastic is in. Focus. And th this perfectly level ridge is what the uh, piece of uh, acrylic sits on. Now I will um, probably just put uh, a little d daub of uh, like blue tack or some sort of stick tack in the corner uh, to make it uh, stick down a little better but I do want it to be removable there's a, geez that hot glue is a little bit messy I gotta I'm always finding a little bit of it stuck somewhere I didn't want it but uh, the other point here is I have some reflective paper that's shiny on one side and just paper on the back and I'm going to cut it out to fit in the gap I don't know if you can see here there's a little bit of a of a step from this below and I'm going to uh, glue that paper around here after cutting it out to miss the uh, NeoPixels. And then I'm going to uh, cut a ring for the middle. Now I haven't decided if I'm going to add a single LED in the middle, like an RGB LED. But there's no real, no real need for that. If anything, it would have been better to uh, tap the out on that and put one little RGB, uh, one of these little NeoPixels in the middle. But mainly, the aesthetic I was going for was a ring. Um, I'm going to put a link to another light box project I did uh, using scrap materials. This one was done with all new materials. Um, this purpose really is, my mom has different crystals and whatnot that she likes to display. And with light coming up through it, it's pretty can be pretty cool. Some of her crystals um, are like big um, pyramidal uh, salt crystals and whatnot and all kinds of stuff on the inside let me see if i can hold this here where you can see it we have a pretty typical pro mini yeah, there we go focused uh, 5 volt 16 megahertz uh, mode simple little reset button i think this was like a dollar from ebay um a little hair in there um again i hot glued everything i used uh Recycled some old uh, IDE ribbon to connect everything. These buttons um, 
Although I do have new ones. These were recycled out of other things and kind of made a bit of a mess with the hot glue. I don't know if that's going to show up there. But uh, I clean them off. They, they function just fine. Um, I have them in code, and when I refine the code, I'm going to load it up. Right now, they just trigger solid colors, which we'll see in a second. Um, here we have the output from that power board. It uh, comes off there and goes into the uh, supply on your Pro Mini here. And the Pro Mini just has some of this wire below it, and it's been hot glued in place to the edge of just this board here. These switches share a common ground, and then they use pins 5 down to pin 2 for those four. Pin 6 is the data pin that uh, feeds the NeoPixel array. And uh, yeah, and then I added a big capacitor here um, to make sure that even if you have a smaller battery, the sudden current draw of the NeoPixel ring going to full bright on something. Um, won't cause a reboot. Uh, it did one reboot. It went full white just long enough to uh, knock out some kind of low batteries. Now it'll run on one battery, but I did two. And, I, and I'll put the file for this uh, case up where it nicely fits two double A's. And you could really put anything. You could edit this project to hold anything uh, besides, um, you know, NeoPixels. Or maybe you want a bigger ring or what, or what have you. Um, but the double uh, A batteries hold pretty good. They're pretty... They're in there pretty good. The little tabs in the middle uh, were intended to kind of hold them in, but there's a general uh, friction fit for all my batteries. They just fit pretty good. There's, uh, I got some really cheap one summer. I don't have them up here. And they're a little bit loose. And then the uh, bit of this, the, these tabs here that stick over are enough to hold them in. Uh, anyhow, uh, simple dip switch type uh, on switch. I'm just going to turn that on while it's facing the other way. Uh, you're going to see there's a, a boot sequence with the green lights and it's flashing and we'll look at the other side in a moment. It's probably going to wash out the, uh, the camera when I flip it around, but, uh, it runs a sequence. I'm just going to put it down there. The sequence is, uh, quite random. The timings and modes and different patterns, except for the direction it always runs in the same way right now, but what it does and how it does the colors and the intensities at each step in the sequence um, is randomized at the top of the loop and it'll just keep doing this. Now I did add these four buttons and I'm going to push the first one. Uh, go straight to solid red. Get to the next one. Solid green. Ooh, that's intense for that camera. Real life, of course, as with all LEDs, they look way better. <laughs> that's the blue. I don't know, it's kind of reading almost as white on this camera to me. Yeah, almost white. And then, this is white. That's one quarter brightness white. As you can see from the green, or sorry, the blue, that's half bright blue. Actually, that's blue set to 150 out of 255 blue. Uh, these things are really bright. And of course, as soon as you put a nice diffuser plate on, you can, uh, interesting pattern now, it's not going to, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't show up on, it shows up pretty good here for the camera, but it doesn't show up uh, on the camera anywhere as good as it does to the, to the naked eye. The naked eye, you can almost still see um, the individual LEDs. And uh, what I want to plan on doing is putting some menu functions on those buttons, not just color overrides, so you'll be able to change the type of random pattern and and in some different modes. So for example, maybe a holiday themed one that just stays in the reds and greens, that kind of thing. Anyhow, that was a project I just did over the last day, day and a bit, just to take a break from some of my other bigger ones. I uh, get a little bit of 3D printing, a little bit of Arduino work, and to try one of those uh, DC DC boosters. And uh, like I said, the interesting thing this time was, is I had to add a 6.3 volt, and I forgot the value. <laughs> I think it's 1000 UF uh, um, electrolytic capacitor. If there's nothing plugged in on a draw, if you power up the booster board, the power light on the booster board will stay lit for almost 40 seconds if there's no um, draw. But of course, as soon as I turn, let's see, I'll turn it off here. Yeah, it goes out like within like three seconds. Um, 
anyhow, that's that. It's a uh, uh, NeoPixel light box, um, meant to be a display. So I'll probably make a clear top for this. And then of course the reflective in there maybe, so that uh, if you want to get the full bright up into something, uh, you could just put like a, a piece of crystal or glass on it. It's not really suitable to use as a drink coaster. It would be neat if I could figure out how to get it even smaller. Uh, use some smaller components, maybe even have to use like a teensy or something like that in there, or not a teensy, sorry, uh, 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 one of those 85s, a little, uh, I can't remember the name of them right now, AT85s or something like that, and then uh, a smaller version of that booster circuit, or um, shave the circuit board and try and do away with the bigger capacitor, and use a, larger, a wider ring, maybe make some glowing coffee coasters, but this is just under an inch thick. I don't know if you can see this here. Let's see if we can get one that's parallel to the camera. Um, there. You can see it's about, yeah, what is that? That's like a sixteenth of an inch. Well, about an eighth, I think. Yeah, it's about an eighth. So it's uh, seven eighths of an inch. In this dimension two and a half by two and a half by seven eighths and then this just pops in oh i haven't sanded it fully so it does it is somewhat directional because there's a tiny bit of variance in the in the 3d printer but anyhow that was 3d printed on a fabricator mini and uh, this one a little bit longer than i intended there but uh, that's what i've been up to um just messing around with that and just wanted to show you guys a little bit of an update that's the boot sequence, which is looking like it's all showing up white on this, but in real life it's quite vibrant color. I'm sure as most of you have known, the LEDs look, uh, LEDs tend to look much better in real life than they do recorded on, on a camera. But anyhow, uh, if you've got any questions or comments, put them down below. Um, if there's enough interest, I'll be putting the uh, file for the PLA part and uh, the code. I'll pop it up on CodePad or something. Uh, uh, if there's uh, enough interest there and uh, yep so don't forget to comment hit that like if you like and if you don't like uh, be great if you'd say why but if you gotta hit it hit it um, and if you like this kind of projects and my crazy stuff don't forget to subscribe um, lets me know it's worthwhile putting up videos for people to watch me be crazy and come up with crazy things and uh, as always uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video